Robert Stairs. Let the master set you free. Let the master bring his peace to you. He ain't asking you to think of this thing. He's asking you to trust him so he can show you how. If you're going to walk in what I do, you have got to make this your foundation. How? I'm telling you, but I'm still uh, high from yesterday. And, you know, the Lord just really have worked out all our salvation. And it is our time to work out his salvation in us. And that, that's by trusting Christ. And, and I've been teaching on an established heart. And um, in, in Psalm 112, Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed. Trust in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid till he see his desire upon his enemies. Now, God wants us, and you, you read this in in. in uh, John 14, 27, Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world give unto you. Now listen what he said, let not, and I, I want to read you this. I want to put some emphasis on this, uh, what the Lord is saying here. And I, I, I tell you, man, if, if your heart's not established on this, you're not going to do it. Uh, John 14, 27, now watch what Jesus said. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world give unto you. Now I'm teaching on an established heart. This is part two. Let not your heart, your thinking, let not your heart be troubled. You have, you have knows he never said his heart. Let not your heart be troubled. The way you think, your, your feelings, emotions, let, they can trouble you. What you see and feel can trouble you. And that's how the devil troubles people's hearts. He brings thoughts to them. So God don't want you to let the devil bring thoughts to you that are going to trouble you. Anything. See, see, he's trying to get evil to overcome you. But Jesus said through the apostle Paul, overcome evil with Jesus, with good. Doing, doing what Jesus said. And so let not your heart be troubled. Then he said this part, neither let it be afraid. Oh, that's big. It ain't many believers on earth live this. Man, people, the heart get troubled all the time. And people be afraid all the time. Afraid they're going to lose. Afraid uh, this ain't going to work. Afraid, you know, afraid. When Jesus love is what kills this. Living in how Jesus loved you. Overcome evil with good. And you know, <clears throat> you can go back and and, uh, and read uh let me let me give you let me give you the principle first in in Romans four. Uh, Romans four. And let's just start reading it in verse one. Uh, what shall we say that Abraham, uh, our fathers pertaining to the flesh, had found? Well, what did what did Abraham find? Uh, I want to read this in the New Living Translation. Abraham was, humanly speaking, the founder of, of the Jewish nation. What did he discover about being right with God? If his good deeds had made him acceptable to God, he would have had something to boast about. See, when you live, this is, this is the one area that 
people, preachers, and some of them understand, very few, really understand about faith. When people preach, you know that you don't have to repent. You don't have to turn when you do wrong because you're already forgiven. Well, you're not already forgiven. The provision for you that Jesus did has already forgiven you. That is not walking in it. I mean, he died for the whole world. Does that mean everybody already saved? Because he's made the provision for you to be saved. It's will that no man perish, but all come to the knowledge of the truth. No. It's whosoever believeth in him. And what the devil want to do, these doctrines of the devil, these men, a lot of these preachers got devils. And they're preaching the doctrine of devils and seducing spirits that is drawing people away from the faith. The faith is hearing Jesus, believing and speaking what Jesus said, and doing what Jesus tells you to do. When you don't add that to the gospel, it is not the gospel. And so <laughs> here the apostle Paul is teaching us from the spirit what Abraham had to do, and Abraham is the father of faith. And, and God brought this over in the New Testament so we would see that this faith, operates the same way today in Christ Jesus. It, it, James taught it, Peter taught it, Paul taught it, that faith has to have action with it. It's no way that Jesus, it, it, it is faith that Jesus died for us, the faith of the Son of God. It is faith Jesus took our sins away, but it's not working in your life and my life if we're not acting upon it. And then they, they're not preaching truth. When they're telling you what the Lord did and they don't make you accountable to hear it, believe it, speak it, and do what he tell you to do. Yeah, that's truth. So if Abraham's good deeds had made him acceptable, Romans 4, 1, 2, he would have had something to boast about. But that's not God's way. For the scripture tells us Abraham believed God. And God counted him as righteous because of his faith. So God is not going to count you righteous because of what, what just what he did. He's going to count you righteous when you live in what he did. And you still ain't earning it. You're not deserving it. But it's because of his love and because of what he did and how perfect Jesus lived. God is imputing that to you where you can come to hear Jesus, believe and speak what Jesus said, and do what Jesus tell you to do. It would take the devil himself to tell you what I just said is wrong. Yeah, because it ain't. When people work, their wages are not a gift, but something they have earned. But people are counted as righteous, not because of their work, not because you did something to earn what the Lord did for you. You can never earn what the Lord did for you, but you have a responsibility to walk in it every day. You have a responsibility to cast down wrong thoughts. You have a responsibility, saints, to get your heart established on the foundation of Jesus Christ. And in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. <laughs> Excuse me, the Lord, knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ every day depart from iniquity. Why is it hard? Well, Pascal, you know it don't matter if, if you keep on sinning. It do matter. It do matter. You need to read the Bible. It do matter. Listen, People are counted righteous not because of their work. You're not working to be righteous. You are having works to live in your righteousness that the Lord gave you as a gift. People are not counted as righteous. People are counted as righteous not because of their work, but because of their faith in God 
who forgive sinners. David also spoke of this when he described the happiness of those who are declared righteous without working for it. See, you can't work to make you what God made you in Jesus. You can't work to get that, but you can work to live in it. And you still ain't deserving it. Amen. Now, oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sins are put out of sight. Yes. What joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of sin. That's why you can hear Jesus believe and speak and do what Jesus tell you to do because you've been forgiven. The power of sin, it don't control us no more. And so then you go to verse uh, 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 16. And, and uh, <clears throat> let me just read 13. Clearly, God's promise to give the whole earth to Abraham and his descendants was based not on his obedience to God's laws, but on a right relationship with God that comes by faith. It don't come by God just doing it for you. It comes by the faith of the Son of God who loved you, Galatians 2.20, and gave himself for you. See, it's our responsibility to love others as Christ loved us. This is how we fulfill living in his righteousness. I mean, how in the world are you going to fulfill uh, uh, Jesus' righteousness just based on, on Jesus did it and not based on your faith, to walk in his faith? If God's promise is only for those who obey the law, then faith is not necessary. And the promise is pointless. For the law always brings punishment on those who try to obey it. The only way to avoid breaking the law is to have no law to break. I know, I know that's stunning some of you all. The only way to avoid breaking the Ten Commandments is don't never have a man to break. When you live in Jesus' love and you, you are letting Jesus by the Holy Spirit guide your life, the, the Spirit will tell you not to do that. It'll lead you not to do that without having that law now to punish you. You ain't going to never obey it without faith in Jesus because he's the only one that lived the law perfectly. And so without him leading you, you're never going to do it on your own. For the law always, in chapter in Romans 4, 15, the law always brings punishment on those who try to obey it. The only way to avoid breaking the law is to have no law to break. So the promises is received by faith. It is given as a free gift, but it's received by faith. And we all are certain to receive it, whether or not we live according to the law of Moses, if we have faith like Abraham. For Abraham is the father of all those who believe. That is what the scripture means when God told him, I have made you the father of many nations. This happened because uh, Abraham believed in God who brings the dead back to life and who creates new things out of nothing. Ooh, that's so good. Even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping, believing that he would become the father <clears throat> of many nations. For God had said to him, now watch, watch that. God said to him, what, what is that? That's faith. Whenever the Lord Jesus says something to us, that's faith. We have to hear that, believe and speak what Jesus said, and then do what Jesus tells us to do. Abraham, uh, God said to him, how many descendants you will have. And Abraham's faith did not weaken. Even though at about 100 years of age, he figured his body was as good as dead and so was Sarah's womb. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew strong. And in this, he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced. Ooh, glory to God. Every time I read this, I get excited. I don't know how you can read this and not get happy. Abraham, listen, Abraham, he was, uh, his faith grew stronger. And this brought 
And in this, he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promised. Ooh, are you fully convinced that Jesus is able to do what he promised? Then you will never have a troubled heart. I didn't say trouble when come to your heart. And you'll never live in fear no more the rest of your life because the love of God will cast that out. Jesus will cast that out when fear comes. You have to speak what Jesus said and do what Jesus said. Fear never... Trouble and fear will not control our hearts. The Lord will. And so uh, he was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. And because of Abraham's faith, God counted him as righteous. You know, people are trying to say that God going to count you as righteous without faith. But the Bible don't teach that. Oh, you're already forgiven. That's counted you as no, that don't mean you walking in this. It don't mean that. Think about this. That because of Abraham's faith, God counted him as righteous. And when God counted him as righteous, it wasn't just for Abraham's benefit. It was recorded for our benefit too, assuring us that God will also count us righteous if we believe in him. <laughs> and that believing in him, saints, is not just saying you believe in him. It's hearing, believing and speaking and doing what Jesus tell you to do. Because Jesus lived this perfect and he is able to show you and I how to do it. Your heart has to be established on faith. His love. Hallelujah. So he was handed over. When, when, when assuring us that God will also count us as righteous if we believe in him, the one who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, he was handed over to die because of our sins, and he was raised to life to make us right with God. So you can see, saints, Abraham was counted as righteous because of his faith, not because of, of just God doing it all. Abraham had a part to play, and you and I have a part to play with Jesus. Why would Jesus tell us in John 8, 12, follow me. I'm the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. <laughs> now, you see this story in Genesis and I'll just go to chapter 39. Uh, Joseph was born one of Jacob's sons. And he had a bunch of more brothers. Benjamin was the last one. And Jacob loved Benjamin. And he, he was just thrilled. And he, he was so thrilled with him, he made him a coat of many colors, and his other brothers hated him because uh, uh, they, they were so jealous of the love that he was getting. See, until you can rejoice with people and for God blessing, you, you're not never going to live in faith. And Joseph had a dream from God. And I hear preachers be saying this, you know, go dream. You can't go dream. The Lord has to bring you a dream. Seek first the kingdom. It's nowhere in the Bible they tell you to go seek a dream. Go dream. <clears throat> it tells you to seek first the kingdom, his rule, and his way of doing and being right. He'll add anything to you. When he brought Joseph a dream. And Joseph told them that they, the dream, and they, man, I'm telling you, they, they just laughed and even hated him more. And so they took him out and just planted. Uh, they wanted to kill him, but one of the brothers didn't let him because <laughs> it wasn't God's will. And they sold Joseph. And they brought Joseph to Egypt. He was sold, and Potiphar brought him. And, 
and the fame of God was up on him. Man, I'm telling y'all, uh, that, that everywhere Joseph went, God made him to prosper. You know, you know when the Lord be for you, who can be against you? And in, in, in Genesis 39, Joseph was brought down to Egypt, part of an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian brought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph. See, the Lord was with Joseph. And he was a prosperous man. And and uh, listen, you know, he was a slave. But he was a prosperous man. Did you know that you can be a prosperous woman, a prosperous man of God? A prosperous woman of God? Right in the position God got you in? He's slave. And, and, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Ooh, glory to God. And Joseph found grace in his sight. They served him and made him oversee over his house. And all that he had, he put in his hand. <laughs> and then here come Potiphar's wife, wanted to have sex with Joseph. And, and, and she kept trying to get Joseph. In, in, in Genesis 39, 7, and it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, uh, go to bed with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wrought it not what is with me in the house, and he has committed all that he has put to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, neither has he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness? and sin against God. And she ended up lying and, and said he tried to rape her. And he was put in prison. Now listen, listen carefully. Your heart must be established that the Lord don't leave you or forsake you because you're going through something. Whether you did it and caused it or whether you be being lied on. If your heart ain't established, you're going to start complaining and blaming God. And, man, he didn't blame God. It wasn't God made that woman do that. Now him. But Joseph stayed faithful to do what the Lord told him to do. I'm telling you saints, he never got his eyes off of God that no matter where he was placed, that he was going to be faithful to God. And his daddy taught him as a little boy that what God had, Abraham had taught Isaac and Isaac had taught Jacob and Jacob had taught his children. And we see here that when he was put in prison, that favor and grace was still on him because he had an established heart. And when the Lord is with you, saints, who can be against you? If God be for you, and you got to start believing and speaking that the Lord is with me, that he'll not leave me or forsake me. He'll be with me even until the end. The Lord don't run out on us because we go through troubles and problems. That's why he said, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it be afraid because I am with you. And, and when you read this, when you read this, in, and I'll close with this in Psalms, Psalms 23, 
And the last verse, uh, Psalms 23, verse, let me get the King James. Uh, no, I'll take the Amplified Bible. Listen to this. You prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anointed my head with oil. My brimming cup runs over. Surely, or only goodness, mercy, and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. And through the length of my days, the house of the Lord in his presence shall be my dwelling place. Hallelujah. Praise God. What I want to make available to you this six CD series called An Established Heart Part Two. <laughs> now, this is for a love gift for $30. Now, this week, uh, I, I'm, I'm giving y'all the opportunity to buy part one and part two and a free copy of my book for $40. I'll pay the shipping and handling. We'll get this right out to you. Or you can order this part two for $30. Then I'll give you a free copy of my book if you order the part two. So make your checks or money orders payable to Jesus His Answer Ministries, Post Office Box 292-112, Nashville, Tennessee, 37229. You also can go on to org and order these online with your credit card. And uh, I'll pay the post in hand. We'll get these right out to you. And I, I know from teaching the word for the last three or four weeks, these, these have been blessing you. So order them because it's a lot more on these. And um, also, I want to invite you all to Jesus as a church. And Saints on the screen is our, our address. We're in Watertown, Tennessee, 332 West Main Street. Our service times 9 o'clock Sunday school, 10 o'clock regular service. And then Thursdays at 7 o'clock p.m. <laughs> you, um, I tell you, Saints, you, you, you'll be blessed to come. This is experience the presence and glory of God. It'll change your life forever. I'll teach you two things, I guarantee you. How to love like Jesus, and I'll teach you how to be in truth every day of your life. So y'all come, and I know you'll never be the same. I want to thank my friends and partners. Thank you so much for your financial support. Saints, thank you for helping me. You can go online to robertscareministry.org. You can use your credit card to, to help us, or you can send it in. And uh, write me, um, email me, let me know how much the broadcast is being a blessing to you. That encourages me and blesses me. Amen. And if you have any uh, uh, prayer requests, we will we'll be glad to pray over them and believe God with you. Well, my prayer for you is that you will know the love of Christ that passes knowledge and be filled with all the fullness of God for Jesus and the ministry of our past lives. And remember, as Christ took your sins away on the cross, Go live that love. Take other people's sins away. Have a blessed day in Jesus. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye.